Good morning and welcome to Stamp and Chat. Just going to check that I'm live in the right place. Before we go any further, and hope that someone will be joining us and that Facebook plays game today because I know sometimes it proves challenging for you to watch. I know when I am trying to watch other people also, um, I get thrown out quite a lot. It's quite frustrating, but I don't know if I want to go down the route of um, using some kind of like streaming service to to go live via YouTube and stuff like that. I just It's kind of easy hopping on here. Um, bit of a flyaway hair situation going on today. It's cold out there and my hair gets really static in this weather. I don't know about you. It's looking a bit glitchy from my end as well. So if you are joining me, please do say hello. Um, it's Tuesday the 7th of March for those who are catching up on YouTube and it's we're having a little bit of a, a cold spell coming our way here in the UK. Um, hopefully there talk, there's talk of the beast from the east but and the chance of maybe a little bit of snow um, but I hope not. I'm, I'm done with snow so hello if you are watching. Today I'm going to be using, I've shown you um, this stamp set that I've used for my projects this morning but I thought I would focus on something from the online exclusives. Now if you have no idea what online exclusives is, it's basically products, new products that are coming our way which are only available to view online. So you have to go to the online store, to my online shop and click on the um, online exclusives and it will actually then show you all the products that are available. Right, glasses on to read. Caroline, good morning, how are you doing? And good evening to you. Um, thank you for joining. Hello Kim, how are you doing? Good evening to you as well. What's your weather up to? I bet you've got some nice weather at the moment. So yeah, so online exclusives. Um, basically there is a flyer and there will be links on my Facebook page to get to this, but there, on the flyer there's a QR code that you can take a photo of and it will direct you to all of the products. Sorry, I keep faffing with my glasses. They feel, they just, you know when you put, if you wear glasses, you sometimes you just put them on and they don't feel right and they just feel a bit crooked and I think they look a bit crooked. So, although I am a little bit crooked, my body is definitely totally out of alignment. Um, a lot of problems I get with my back and I've had physio and stuff and I was told that it was due to childbirth that my back is probably like it is and, and I don't stand straight. I tend to lean to the left a lot um, Kim, it's 38 to 40 degrees in the last two days. Goodness me, that just sounds delightful. I'm not a lover of the cold. Don't, I'm not a fan of the cold. I don't mind if I'm prepared for it, wrapped up. But when it gets into my bones, yeah, my circulation's rubbish as well. Um, and it's always my feet and my hands that get cold first. So, well, you enjoy that good weather. Right, let's get you down on my desk because I've got a couple of projects to share with you. Um, and you can see the two stamp sets that I've pulled out to play with. One is from the online exclusives and the other is from the annual catalogue. So bear with the palm of the hand. I hate having to do this, but it is the most pain-free way of getting you down on my desk. I find anyway, let's have a little zoom. So we have had a very poorly dog in the household the last few days. He, thankfully, I think he has slightly turned a corner, um, but he's been really poorly, bless him. He, he started being sick on Thursday and he didn't eat a single thing from Thursday until last night. Um, nothing at all and he's hardly been drinking he's not a massive drinker anyway um and he's just been like really odd really under the weather really quiet 
doing his business in the house, which is just so not like him at all. He's just, you know, and he's such a creature of habits. Um, and it's just not been nice to have him unwell. But we took him to the emergency vets on Sunday morning because I didn't want to leave it until Monday. And they're not sure what it is because he was having lots of vomits um, and he wasn't dehydrated on Sunday morning. That's what we were worried about. But basically, to cut a long story short, he had that consultation at the emergency clinic on Sunday morning. And then yesterday, because he still wasn't eating, I took him back to our local vet, um, who were fabulous, Church Road Vets. And they got him in straight away and checked him over. And they've taken some bloods, given him some antibiotics, given him an injection of antibiotics, um, and also something to try and calm his tummy because I think he was a little bit inflamed. So bless him, he's been poked and he's been prodded. Um, but last night he did actually eat a little bit of chicken that I cooked. So and he's had a little bit of ham this morning. So and we've had a wag of the tail, which is definitely a sign because his tail has been permanently tucked between his back legs since Thursday. So. I have everything crossed. I've been so worried about him. If you're a pet owner, you know what it's like when they can't talk to you. So thankfully, I'm hopeful that he is on the mend and that it was just a virus. It could have been something he picked up while we were at the Breckens previous weekend. So who knows? We shall see. Um, hopefully, Bloods will be back tomorrow or Thursday. So let's hope there's nothing else going on that's causing these problems. So... But to see him eating is is much, much better. So anyway, you can see what I'm using today. I've pulled out the inspired thoughts. I've hardly used this and I just absolutely love it. So I thought, even though we've got some fab greetings on the Irresistible Blooms, that I would team it with this. So you're topping 22 degrees tomorrow, Caroline. That is good. I know, poor Alfie. I'm I'm hoping that he's on a mend because I've not been wanting to leave him and yesterday was a nana day so I literally went and I did the school run and I brought Teddy straight back here and stayed with Alfie and then took Teddy back um and then I picked up Luca on my way back from them and had him here for the afternoon so I was with him for most of the day um but yeah he's just been really quiet and not himself so fingers crossed everybody so both cling stamps here, which I do love a cling stamp. I love the way they perform, but I do always find it challenging stamping greetings onto designated pieces that aren't going to be like die cut. Um, more challenging because you cannot see where you're stamping. So those are our stamps. What else am I using? From the online exclusives, I'm going to be using my favourite one of these, which is this um kind of like um like a waffle cone kind of pattern so i'm going to be using that one let's put the others out of the way what else have we got colors let's have a look at some colors now i've pulled out gray granite but my card stock is actually sahara sand but i felt that the gray granite ink for my greetings was just going to pop out a little better um, so we've got balmy blue, which I'm loving at the moment. And then we've got soft sea foam. Good morning, Belle, my lovely. I know, he's been so sad and he's been so kind of needy as well, like constantly by your feet. And he's only allowed to sit on one of the sofas down at the far end of the house. And he knows he knows he's not allowed on any others. You know what they're like. They, they know their boundaries. Um, and like every time you sit down, he's like straight up there and... He's just been having like this little grumble in his, it, when he's breathing. And oh, I was just so worried on Saturday. There were tears, let's just say. I was so worried. But um, fingers crossed. How are you, Belle, anyway? I started to watch your live this morning and it threw me out about three times. But I hear that your lovely pooch, Molly, had you on your knees. So they're terrors, aren't they? they we, we underestimate their strength. Right, that's our colours. Let's lay those out. We definitely underestimate their strength. I remember once we were walking Alfie and he ran off round a corner and he came running back and literally took me 
off of my feet where he ran into the back of my legs and I ended up on the floor. And for a minute, I sat there and thought, what just happened? <laughs> um, bit of a shock. When you get older, it's a bit of a shock when you, when you fall over or you're taken out. So, right, let's put that embossing folder to one side. So within the suite of the Irresistible Blooms, there is this lovely pack of paper. You can see I've been chopping into it. Um, and it's got these lovely new colours, which, by the way, Lost Lagoon and Pretty Peacock, we're still unsure as to what is going to happen with them. But we have been told that there are there is going to be a colour refresh. Um, and I would say by that, that by bringing those colours into papers, that there's a good possibility that they'll come back as part of a, a colour collection. But we have to wait and see until the end of the month. So just be wary on that. Um, the in colour, in colours that are going out, the Fresh Freesia, Pale Papaya, even in Evergreen, that range, the 2021 to 2023, some of those reinkers and cardstocks are now back in stock, just to let you know if you were trying to get them. But these papers are just delicious. So they're part of this suite, but I'm not going to actually use those today just because I was steering away. Can't get that back in. Steering away from that colour palette. Um, so I pulled out the Country Gingham, which you know I just love. I'm slightly addicted to Balmy Blue at the moment, um, but we've got Mint Macaron, Sweet Sorbet, Balmy Blue and Pale Papaya. But pale papaya petal pink petal pink but we've got fabulous papers in here um, those are all my off cuts i tend to slide a separate bag in with those so that i kind of i can get to them easier so we're going to be using some of those and i really wanted to go sweet sorbet with this and i might have a go at it after um to see kind of what they come out like but i was just just torn to which colour to use from those papers. Um, and we're going to be using these sort of colours for one of my, I think it's my Fun Folds class that's coming up next week. So I thought I'd save those papers for that. So we've got lots of bits and pieces in here. Um, and that seems like ages ago that I was designing this. So I'm going to sit for a minute and think what I need to use first. So let's start with a bit of stamping. Let's fold up our base layer, which is five and three quarters. We've got a mark on there already. And an Alfie hair, good start. Stuck to the rubber. Um, five and three quarters by eight and a quarter. I'm just gonna fold that in half. And put that to one side. Not seeing any more comments coming in. So, and I've also cut a strip of that lovely, still got that little blood pinch on there as well. It's not, it doesn't seem to be getting smaller. So the lovely balmy blue with that nice sweet sorbet. I'm gonna put that to one side. So this is Sahara Sand cardstock. Let me grab a piece of gray granite, just so you can, maybe see the difference. Can you see? When you've got them on their own, you could mistake that for grey granite until you put it together. And then if we pull in Smoky Slate, you can see just sort of how different the colours are. But I wanted to use Sahara Sand as my base. Um, I love using neutrals for bases of my cards. Kind of just... Although there's not a lot of colour going on here, it kind of just breaks it up. Right, we're going to start with a bit of stamping. I think that might be my stamping piece. And I've mounted up um, the smaller flower of the two. So these are shown at full size. So we've got these two gorgeous flowers here. And then I've mounted up the two leaves as well. So I'm going to stamp those in balmy blue. Anyway, how are we all? How was your weekend? What have you been up to? Let's open all of these ready. Ready to, ready to use or ready to rumble, as I would say to the children. So we had children staying over on Saturday night. Um, 
and then Jack was racing on Sunday morning, so they were all up early. We were awake early as well. You know what? It's, I don't well. For me, I am generally awake, so I'm just going to ink this up in balmy blue. Five o'clock is my waking up time at present. Um, I was awake at bang on five this morning, and I think I must have dozed back off because then I woke up at six. Um, well, obviously I did doze back off, um, but it didn't feel like I was. I felt like I was wide awake. Right, I'm just stamping two of those flowers for the time being. And I want some leaves as well. So you can see we've got like a three leaf and a two leaf. And I'll show you the dice that go with these because the die set, oh, I moved that one. Do one that way, we might get another one in on the edge. And I think, let's put one there. I might need to re-ink this ink at some point. So the dies that go with this set are gorgeous. I'm gonna be using this one today because I haven't used that one with you yet. Um, and I don't know if I've shown you anything with that but we've got some really great sort of standalone dies obviously these cut out the stamped images um, and we've also got that little leaf there which don't miss that one and not forgetting the splat a huge splat but we've got these lovely um intricate leaves as well which which are really sweet and these kind of ones with the hole in the middle so a very usable set. Right, how many have we got? One, two, three. Let's stick with that for the moment and leave it there. And let's do some die cutting. Let's cut them out. Right, one of these I'm not going to cut. But I always snip up my pieces because otherwise it's tempting to lay dies next to each other when they're on your plate for cutting and then they move and cut into each other. Caroline, you spent the weekend making some cards for a custom order, wedding and Easter cards tomorrow. And then you've got some birthday cards to make, all for one lady. That's fabulous, that's fabulous. I used to make cards to order and then I just found it very time consuming. Um, and to be fair, you know, my business, I'm running, I've always run Stampin' Up! as a business um, from, well, I joined in 2009 and I kind of knew straight away that I wanted to run classes and events. So I did used to make cards for people and then it just took up too much of my time. So, and I have mountains of cards here. Let's just pop these in. So we'll cut these for now. Tape. Progressed onto a new roll. Sure, this is a stamping up one. From many moons ago, um, when we used to have the project life from st by stamping up, um, we used to get a little roll of washi tape. Anyone remember that? They were fabulous kits. Loved them. I've got loads of them that are unused and loads that are part used as well, but I would never get rid of them because they will always come in handy. I do have a bit of a passion for scrapbooking, but it's just something that I don't find time for right at the minute, which is really sad with all these grandchildren <laughs> mounting up around me. Um, I wonder if there will ever be the time to to take on board, you know, scrapbooking, all of them, but it would be a nice thing because... It, Vivi, she's she's not quite five, but she loves looking through my albums that I've got. And I've got several, I've got a lot. She loves looking through at pictures of her daddy and her auntie when they were little. So, Kim, you entered the local show. Brad entered a wooden doll he made. Wow, he made you a wooden doll. Oh, a doll box, Kerry Reed, Engage the Brain. And it had drawers and coat hangers. And he won second prize. Woohoo to Brad. Well done. You entered some cards on a scrapbook page. That sounds like fun. Your mail card one. Let me just scroll down. 
first prize, an overall champion. Excellent. And your female card won a third. Your scrapbook page of your granddaughter won first and overall champion. That's brilliant. So I'm thinking that's kind of... And your other page is one third. Excellent. That was your first time entering. Well done, you. Well done, Kim. That's fabulous. We kind of have... Because, like, we live in the country here. I'm just going to run this through. And then I'll talk. We have, like, country fairs and things here. Um... But I've not heard of like entering sort of random things like that. We have like who's got the largest, who's grown the largest marrow and things like that. And, you know, who's got the most perfect looking plums or whatever. Um, oh, maybe that wasn't the best suggestion. But yeah, you know where I'm going. Um, but yeah, we do have like country fairs and things like that here. But never heard of like one where you could, I guess maybe you have like a, it's a craft section within that so you can submit anything that's that, that's been made by you i'm guessing that's what it is right i might just cut one more of that one how beautifully do these cut they leave like just the perfect amount of white border around so they had the veggies as well yeah and it's usually like flowers um and vegetables and then what we tend to do with like our big big show in the village that I used to live in they have then like a craft marquee where you can go and shop what people have have, have produced and made right also on here I've cut a long strip I think I only need this about six inches pretty sure this die here is about six inches so let's just snip that like that that's quite a wide piece but we'll leave it at that we'll tape it down so that it doesn't go anywhere and then get another scrap we'll do a couple of these as well so that you can see what they come out like where's that washi I will say I am very much missing my take your pick tool. I feel lost without it, having to use the end of my scissors to push things out. I have got a non stamping out pokey tool, but it's vicious. It's really sharp. So I'm not really inclined to use it that much. It's just these thoughts. It's just, it's on one of those like extendable um, where the point comes in and out and it's just, I just think it's a bit dangerous. Right. So I'm going to have to use my scissors to get these out because these tend to stick in a little. Although that one has come out. Leaving all the bits behind and then we'll sort this one out in a minute. Let's just take the tape off so what did I do the weekend Saturday oh, I worked on Saturday morning which is kind of like my usual thing can you see that's still stuck in there so we'll just push that out so I worked on Saturday morning which was lovely and I probably worked until about 2 p.m. till Jason got in from work himself and then the grandchildren came over they stayed overnight so not a lot got done i'm just going to use a ruler to scrape these into my bin i have got a new plate but i'm reluctant to put it on is anyone else like that i just want to keep keep a new one um and it, it will make a difference to things not sticking into that bottom plate but I keep, I keep continuing to use it. Now, this is quite a dodgy one to get out of the die. It's a bit like this one, where you've got very fine pieces of cardstock that it's cutting. So you have to be a bit gentle 
Um, and I have used in the past something called wax paper. When you've got really delicate dyes, put a piece of wax paper in between your cardstock and the die and that will just help it. So what I wanna do just to help this one out is push on the very tiny little dots. Just move my light a bit. Just to help it come out. I mean, it's, it's not gonna be hard, but I don't wanna tear any bits and pieces. So that, that's what we're left with if you cut, if your paper is bigger than the die. Just empty my thing. Just give that a little bend. See, let that tool, I do miss it. We're just gonna get that underneath. I'm gonna push that one out as well. Because it's not got like a solid end that sticks, it kind of like concertinas, if you know what I mean. So the ends aren't sectioned together, but the middle is obviously like concertina, so it's, that's why it's not falling apart. Um, let's just give that a tap, get out any bits that are left. I hate putting a die back that's still got bits in it. I feel like it's kind of like manners when you use a die, you put it back to how you found it. So we just got this lovely piece here like this. How beautiful is that? So the reason I cut this at six inches to get the whole of it out is I just, I was gonna use two parts of it. So Caroline, my pick, take your pick tool, um, was picked up by a team member last Thursday when they came for a team event. And yeah, it, she's not, she doesn't live too far away from me, but it's not in the direction that I go generally. So probably wait until I see her next, this month. Next month, yes, we're in March already. Um, so yeah, I'll just claim it back then, but I really miss it. I really do miss it. Okay, right, we're gonna start by just adding plate out of the way. Some Tombow. Let's get my wet wipe ready. Two, oh gosh, it's, it thinks it's a volcano. It's erupting. So I'm just adding little dots to the large white circles on here, just to anchor it in place. That should be enough. Let's try not to get it all over oneself. And I'm literally, let's do it like that. Gonna pop it down, someone's snoring underneath. Gonna pop it down like that. Gonna take that grubby old envelope that I reuse, make sure it's in place and just press it down. And then the glue can go on my envelope if it needs to. Now, if you feel there is at any point that you need a bit more glue, you can add it in with just get a strip of card, put a bit of glue, and I might have to do that, so I'll keep that. Now, I want to chop this because I'm going to use part of this on the card that I'm making and then part of it on the next project. So I'm going to cut this at three and a half inches. So bear with me. So I've now got two pieces, okay, from that six inch piece. And it's at this point where I would then just take a bit of glue on there, tap it underneath the pieces like that, that are floating. So just kind of make a little fishing rod. And then we've just created that layer there. So, um, I might try and find a card where I've used this on the background as well. Give you a sneak peek of what's coming up. So we've just got that layer here, which is stuck down enough, I think, for my liking, just apart from that. Gosh, I don't know what's up with my Tombow, but that was definitely too much. 
that came out then. Let's just stick these little bits down. So I'm just going to slide it under if I can. And kind of press it against the adhesive just to pop a little bit on the back. Right. Card base. First layer in Sahara sand. It is very delicate, Belle. That is the only thing about it. It is very delicate. But I love how pretty it is. Um, and I've seen people adding gems and things to these circles, which is so pretty. Um, right, three and seven eighths by five and a half. That's my Sahara sand layer. And then I've got a layer of basic white, which will be an eighth. I've got glue all over my ruler. An eighth shorter at three and three quarters by five and three eighths. And I'm going to run this through that embossing folder. I can never open these. I'm going to pop it in. I'll line up the line and just run that through really quickly. I always feel it's important, whatever you're embossing, to try and get your piece of paper square inside the folder. So I try and follow the line on the bottom of here so that it's square inside and not crooked because sometimes with the pattern on the embossing folder it can really throw, throw your card out and make it look a bit crooky. Good morning Lucianne, how are you doing my lovely? I'm looking forward to seeing you on Thursday morning, it's been a long time, a long long time. So. What I am finding with this embossing folder that it is kind of like shrinking one side. So, Kim, the die is from the Irresistible Blooms. <coughs> Excuse me, that caught me. Um, this is on the online exclusives. So, if you are a customer, if you go to stampinup.uk, um, that will take you to the Stampin' Up website, but there is a link there for all of the online exclusives, but how pretty are these? So these two flowers cut out images in the stamps, so do these three cut out leaves, but these are standalone ones. Let me see if I can find something really quick. So this is a sneak of one of the cards from, that's coming up really bright and fresh but can you see how I've used it there just straight on the background it's really pretty really pretty and I think something especially this one you're going to find so many uses for that you know even just as a wreath or as just a background layer right let's mount these two up ready I'm always indecided on which side I prefer on this embossing folder but so these embossing folders are available as a set of three they're called the basics embossing folders um, I've shown you them before but they're on the online exclusives as well right we're going to lay this down onto our base Lucianne, you drove out to find where we were last week. Bless you. You just have to take into account um, traffic. And please don't worry. If you know you're going to be early, just message me when you're, you know, 10 minutes away or something. It will be fine because I'll be here. So if you're early, it really doesn't matter. Just give me a bit of warning and I'll make sure I'm not eating my breakfast when you arrive. I'm guessing you'll like do the school run and then sort of head over. So this layer then, I'm going to pop down on the bottom of my card. How lovely would it have looked that way? And if I'd stamped flowers in sweet sorbet. I'm really tempted to do this in a different colourway. Not today, because my projects are planned. But maybe as some thank you cards for customers. Right, I'm going to pop this one just up from the bottom. Nice even border either side. 
He's on the wander. I'm hoping he's going down to get a drink. Nope, he's just pushed the door open. He's going out, which is good. Right, so we've got some flowers and some leaves here. We've got these two lovely intricate ones we cut out. On my original, I also cut out one of these leaves as well, but I'm not sure it stands out that well, so I may not put it on. The other thing I want to do is I want to kind of like decoupage with this one. So rather than cutting out the whole thing, I'm just going to trim on like the inside petals. And I'm cutting right next to the image line, not leaving a white gap because it's going to go directly on top of the flower that I've already die cut out. Oh, Kerry. <laughs> Concentrate. I always thought I was really good at multitasking, but it's not until I realise that when I'm talking and doing something that, yep, yeah, get those oopsie moments. So uh, the weekend kind of came and went, but so, of course Sunday morning, because the children were here, we were wide awake at 6am. So, and they went off race and they were gone by quarter to seven, seven o'clock. So, um, we were like up and about early and we couldn't take the little man out for a walk because he was too poorly. Um, but we then decided that we were going to take him to, to the emergency vets. So that kind of took up our morning. Um, and then we stopped on the way back and Jason sat in the car while I dashed in to get some food shopping. Right, let's just curl these leaves. I'm gonna need some more leaves, but I've got some die cut in a bag somewhere. Just give everything a bit of life. Two things I couldn't do without, my bone folder. Well, there are lots of things I couldn't do without, but that I use all the time, bone folder and take your pick tool. They're just like classics. Right, where are we going with this? Let us add, I'm just gonna add one dimensional to the middle of here. And then one to the middle of there. I'm gonna layer these together. It's quiet on here today. Where is everybody? In fact, I don't think I added a dimensional to my original in the middle, but we'll leave it at that because we have, it will make it pop a bit. Right, I'm gonna pop that one down. Oh, no, I'm not, I'm gonna do something else first. Just looking at my original. Mounted up the splat. I'm just gonna add a little bit of splattage don't think I'm going to stamp off. This is quite a pale colour. Um, choose it that way, I think. Just up there, like that. Isn't that a fabulous splat? If there ever was something fabulous about a splat, that would be it. And let's just pop our little flower down there. And when it is popping, look at it, it's literally about to take off from my card. You're going to be wishing me good luck trying to get this one in an envelope. Right, I'm just bending back that way. And I've got a little bag of goodness here. Let's tip those out. Oh, got a random, some random succulent ones in there. Sea foam even. Got lots cut ready, so we'll just let's curl a couple more and then we'll we'll pop some in and see how many we need. Right, so I'm literally gonna pop a bit pop. How many times am I gonna say that word today? I'm gonna put a bit of tombow just under the one edge. And we're gonna randomly Add some foliage. A 
underneath. I'm going to push them in quite far. I don't want them to be poking out sort of too much. I want quite a bit of foliage behind. Um, maybe move that one that way a bit. Squeeze one in at the bottom. My back's definitely talking to me today as well. That's having grandchildren yesterday, I think. And then we'll just do this final one. So baby, I call him baby Luca. His name is Luca, of course, but because Evzy, middle granddaughter, she's nearly three, she calls him baby Luca. So it's kind of stuck with me. I'm gonna add this leaf in as well. He's sort of, he must be five and a half months now, but he's such a happy little chappy, honestly. He's like addictive, you know, you you just want to like talk to him because he just, you get such a huge response from him all the time. I'm just gonna add that one under there and then maybe one opposite. He's such a happy chappy, so having him for the, the afternoon, I think cuddles. And then Alex came to pick him up from me, so it was perfect. We are nearly there on this one. So we've just got a lovely, like, burst of foliage with a little flower popping in the middle. It's just full of foliage. Of course, you could um, add to this and add more flowers, but right, for my greeting, I was a bit torn so there's some really good ones on here. I love that we've got a sympathy one in here too. We've got a general Christmas. Um, congratulations, thanks. It's such a good set. Such a good set. But I think, have I mounted it? I'm going to do the thinking of you on your special day because that's the one I've got mounted. And I'm going to do it in grey granite, as I said. So hopefully the one I've done on my original. Let's just get a scrap. I did in Sahara sand and it didn't quite pop as much. Right, I'm just gonna stamp this against a line to see how true it is. Right, now to me, it's slightly up on the right-hand side. So I'm gonna go slightly down on the right-hand side when I stamp this one and hope that it's somewhere straight. Not too bad. Let's try one more. Oh, he's having a drink. That's good. He doesn't drink a lot normally. He's having a big drink. Yeah, he doesn't drink a lot and he's not a greedy dog. But for him not to eat for like more than four days, I was really getting worried. Right, I'm just going to snip that off. And I definitely prefer this grey granite to the Sahara sand for my greeting. Oops, just put my finger in the ink. Thank you, Caroline. The colours, we're just so lucky that Stampin' Up! bring us gorgeous colours, aren't we? And these just team together really nicely. Where's my dimensionals? So, we're very blessed, aren't we, to have such lovely products to create with. Because to me, it just makes it easy having nice stuff to play with. Right, let's pop that down on there. And then to finish, I'm going to add some pearls. I've run out of large ones on this sheet, but another time when I'm missing my take your pick tool really missing it so I'm gonna to have to use the end of my scissors and there's a chance of us losing some as they fly across the room so I need a large one from here so I'm gonna put one there and then a couple of small ones I think see look they just don't pick up as well like they do with that take your pick tool one up here to kind of like balance it. And 
and there we go how beautiful would this be as well if we kind of embossed it even with clear embossing powder that would be lovely but it's so fresh i think um and i love how the the sahara sand kind of like grounds it in um just like as a subtle neutral so there we go that's the first project my original is pretty much the same but can you see how i did my greeting in sahara sand and it just doesn't pop quite as well as the gray granite thank you kim thank you guys you're so lovely right got a little 3d project for you now and it's you've seen something very similar to this um but i'm going to do something extra with it and this is how i work you you see me use things and how they evolve um and this is how you know i'm going to share this with you so the box that i'm creating you've seen before it's going to be decorated differently but i'm also showing you another way that you can use that box if if you made it yourselves maybe i'm guessing some of you might have um let's just grab in my scoreboard move some bits and pieces out of the way it's a really simple box to go together so we're starting again with sahara sand cardstock and it measures five and three quarters by eight and a quarter and we're going to score landscape at one and three eighths, three and five eighths, five inches and seven and a quarter. Apologies for those of you that don't work in inches. It's just what I'm comfortable with. And then we're going to score it portrait at one and a quarter. And then our lid piece measures four and a quarter by three and three eighths plus a smidge on each of each of those. So it's four and a quarter and a smidge by three and three eighths and a smidge. And a smidge is kind of like a little bit. <laughs> it's just a little bit extra. And we're going to score at one inch on all four edges. Caroline, you like the grey granite sentiment as opposed to the Sahara, sa Sahara sand. Yeah, it just pops a little, doesn't it? Just pops out. Stands out better. Right. Now, I'm going to do this as quickly as I can because you will have seen this before. So I'm just cutting up to that one inch score line on each edge. So I cut and turn, that's the way I do this. And I'm just taking out a little wedge that will just help it kind of come together a bit easier. And then on this one here, we've got the shorter panel on this side. I'm gonna chop that out completely. Can't see where the line is. I'm going to turn my radiator down a minute, just a second. It will just get over warm in here and it's just me in here for the day today. So I don't want to overheat it just for little old me. Um, and I can hear the water rushing through the radiators. So, right. So I've just cut up all four of those you like gray granite belt yeah gray granite and sahara sand i just think they're really great great colors for bases teamed with crumb cake of course i mean we would never forget crumb cake um i have created a project for my three cards in a 3d using basic gray and it's quite dark and i'm not 100 percent sure about it but we shall see I always give people options when they come to class as well, like not in general card making, but when we're making a box, if there's an option to use a different color cardstock, I will offer it because I think we've all got, we've all got such different taste and style, haven't we? What, what I like, somebody else may not like. And I say give people an option that is within reason. You know, I cut card kits, but for certain things I won't cut 
a base layer, say of a, a box that uses two sheets, I will let the customer choose before I cut. So depending on stock supplies as well of, of cardstock. Right, so you can see how easily this comes together. So tabs go in, bottoms go up. Now that is going to be the back of our box where the join is. So this layer, this piece here is the front of my box. So I've cut a piece of balmy blue that measures two inches by four and a quarter. And then a piece that's just a bit shorter at one and seven eighths by four and one eighth. And I'm just gonna run that through that embossing folder. Very quickly. Top plate on. Remember to always put the crease of the embossing folder into the machine first. It just means it will stop the embossing folder slipping or pushing. So always put this folded piece in first. If you put these in first, there's a chance it might push back open these it might might push back the top layer which will then damage that that fold so little tip for you to help with the longevity of your products i'm gonna stick these two together so we've just got like a little skinny border going that doesn't look like it's shrank Oop, my glue needed cleaning then it left a a bobble of dried glue layer those two up so I'm going to decorate the box first because you've seen this box, um, but you haven't seen what I've done on the inside. It's just another way of you to use this box. So I'm giving you like double ideas. Right, we're going to add. We could have done this before, but I know it's not going to go over the edge. So I, I'm happy to add this at this point once I've embossed and stuck it. I'm gonna pop dimensionals on the back of here. Not a necessity, but I just like the look. Oh, I wish my nails would grow. Can't get anything at the moment. Hard to grab. Just having a bad time with my nails and I guess that's maybe due to just to how my body is responding to everything at the minute. I'm tired. But I'm okay, and that's the main thing. I'm okay, just tired. But my neck, you know, I think like hair and nails, that's a sign, isn't it? If we're feeling a bit tired and run down. I'm just layering that on there already. I just like the look of it popping off. And we can decorate it once we've stuck it together. So in theory, we should be able to lay this flat, put that tab down and fold that over. And then it, it, it sticks right where it should. But I quite often Let's just clean the end of that glue. I like to kind of glue it in the air, if you know what I mean. So that I can definitely guide the lines together. and move them around a bit. That does look a bit of a crooked cut. Once you've kind of got them together, then you can give it a good press down. Okay, so this being the back of our box, which is here, we're gonna pop those side tabs in. And I like to just run a little bit of glue right on the edge there where those two, come on Tombo. <laughs> Don't be shy, just a little flick. That was a bit over the edge. See just where they meet. Then the back panel. And then the front panel last. Make sure it's all straight. Sit it down and take something along just to push that all down inside. It's not the 
sticking too well. Let's just add another bit in there. There we go. So we've got our box, as simple as that. Half a sheet of cardstock. So, Belle, what are you telling me? Biotin for hair and nails and vitamin D3 for your immune system. So I do take vitamin D daily. Um, I worry about taking all these vitamins. I mean, I, d I take three different vitamins. I'd have, um, and my brain, <laughs> my foggy brain is forgotten what the one's called to have at night um but yeah have vitamin d i was looking what was i looking at vitamin b3 i think the other day but yeah biotin i'll look that up my nails are always you know how embarrassed i am with my nails they're always horrible and they're very peely at the moment as well and my hands are constantly dry and I do use a lot of hand cream. Right, let's just pop this lid together. So by making this a smidge bigger than that size, that doesn't look like it's gonna fit, but I think it is. Um, it means it just gives that extra allowance for it to slide over the top. So we just stick all of these together. that tuck that one in ready lay the tombow down in there i was going to put tombow on the other bit then but i'm going to wait and then the last one it's always hard to show these little awkward movements but Make sure they're all stuck. Hello, Yusuf. How are you? Good, thank you. You too? Okay, and then our lid just sits on and it's snug. Okay, just by adding that smidge. If you get a little bit of slight overhang like that, just take your snips and carefully take off that little bit that little lip just to give you a nice straight edge right what have we got next we've got a strip of balmy blue which is going to go around here let's fold it first so this is literally out of my scraps it's slightly it will do. It is a little bit wide, but it was just out of my scraps. So I'm going to hold it and pinch it and then bend it around the corner. While it's there, I'll do that back one as well, like that. And then hold that, bend it, bend it. I can hear the birds singing. The door is open downstairs, courtesy of my little man under the table. Try and keep the heating in. Mind you, it's never warm downstairs. There is heating downstairs, but I keep saying to Jason, maybe we should put another radiator in the hallway down there because it gets freezing down there. Those of you that come here will know that. If it's ever hot up here, like in the summer when it gets stifling up here, if you need like a breather, you just need to go down and stand in the workshop. We'll go and have a wee in the toilet because it's always cold in there as well. So I'm just gluing that down. I'm not going to glue the rest of it. I'm just going to wrap it around and then pop glue on there. And then the important thing is to line these two up like that. And then we've just got a lid that kind of coordinates. It's not too blank. You could then at this point go in with a bit of Tombow if you wanted to you know if, if you've got an edge that's bowing a bit just get a bit of glue under there and press it down so we've got our box like that now you've seen how this comes together before 
I don't know whether I need to do the next step, but we'll see how we go with time. Half past ten. Right, got more bits and pieces in here. This is now for what is going on the inside. I'm just going to pull mine out so I know what I'm doing. This is such a cute box and loads of people have said this lately that they love this box. Um, so I've got more bits and pieces in my bag. And what I'm going to do is create a little card that fits inside here. So I've cut a piece of cardstock, which measures, I think, four by four. So four by four. If you did it slightly shorter at three and seven eighths, you'd get three from a sheet of cards, A4 cardstock. At four inches, you only get two. Um, but I wanted to then score it at two. So I've just scored it down the middle at two inches. So we've got this, make sure they line up. This little skinny card. And I'm just gonna mat it and layer it with a piece of Sahara sand, which is one and seven eighths by three and seven eighths. And then another layer, which I've already embossed at one and five, one and three quarters by three and five eight. Three and three quarters, one and three quarters by three and three quarters. And before I stick that on, do you remember this? little leftover piece from before we're going to add that to the bottom so I'm literally just going to pop some Tombow on there like that and stick it just up from the bottom a little bit following lines on my grid paper to help me get it straight and I'm just going to Trim off there like that. Oops. Bit of rogue cardstock from my box lid. You could put this in your trimmer, you'll get a nice clean cut. So then we end up with that. Now this is where we might just have a couple of straggly pieces. So we'll just put a bit of, try and get a bit of adhesive on the back of that bit. She says. Put a bit more glue on there, it's dried. So I'm literally just getting a little bit of glue under there, just to hold that down. Stop it flying away and getting caught. And then we'll just mount this straight onto here. Like that. Wiggle it around a bit. And then that can go straight onto this little card. So we've kind of got a ready-made card and gift. Got really, that bit sticking up as well now. Really skinny border around here. Oops, all oh, that bit's on its own now. That's why it's, let's just turn it that way a bit. Better anchor that down, otherwise it's gonna be flying off. So we've just got this really cute little card. I need to stamp, let's use that scrap. Another flower in balmy blue. And we'll trim that one out just like we did before. I'm not gonna leave, oops, any white space. Just because if I leave a white edge, there will be random bits of stamped image from the flower behind that I don't want. So we just trim into that middle flower. Stand up straight for a moment. Opportunity to stretch the back. 
it's surprising, like Luca's five and a half months, I think. <laughs> I'm losing track of time, guys. Um, but he's getting heavy already. Right, we'll give that one a curl. Where are my dimensionals? Back where they belong. Pop a flower on there. Are we all still alive? How are we? I know a lot of you multitask while you're watching. I do the same. So I'm just going to pop that little flower there. Let's pull in a three and a two leaf image. I always seem to turn those two down and that one up. I talk about Alfie being a creature of habit. I don't know quite what you make of me sometimes, guys. <laughs> I've missed out a bit on here. Let's just... Don't look. I'm going to pull all that really slowly and gently. Just want to stamp that. Just about fits. See, that nobody would know. I'm going to lift that under there. I don't want too much of that poking out. Pop the other side under. Like that. And then I think, I just wanted a small greeting on this one. I'm going to go with the hello. Let's start with it straight, that would help. By having your stamp mounted straight. Right, have I got a skinny strip I have? It's very skinny as well. This could be a challenge. Let's start with a scrap in the gray granite and just see how it lines up against a line. Pretty well, so. Get back in there. Got a lovely long strip here to have se several goes at this. When you can't see directly over what you're stamping, it's tricky. Let's just go slightly to the left and a bit heavier. That will do. Bit crooked, but. Oop. Save those others for later. And then I'm just going to add on a bit of dimension. So we used um, this stamp set at my stamp and chat down at the local coffee shop last week. And the ladies loved it. We used So Saffron. I'll show you what we did. It's on my Facebook page anyway. Um, but they just loved how fresh it looked. So cute little card. That goes in there. Now I need another scrap. And I just want one more flower. Quickly cut that one out. finish on my box and then I've just got something else to go in this box so we're not done yet I wasn't going to finish it but I thought I may as well I should dig out the older versions of this box that we've done as well and we did this last week at my team gathering not this one um but this box in a different colourway using this set. Don't need you. Right, we'll have one of you again. One of you. Done 
dimensional under that one. Pop that right down in the middle. And then I think we'll just pop a dimensional under here for speed. You like the card, thank you guys. I know that you're gonna find lots of different things to go in this box as well. And I know it's, I shared it with you recently, but I always like to show you how you can progress from something and turn it into kind of something else. Right, we'll have that little, hello there. Pop it on dimensional just because we can on well, this box can pop all it likes and I think we'll just have a box straight pop it right on the flower like that maybe over a bit like that have a little bit of bling on there we can catch them on the scissors. I love pearls. I just think they're they're so like subtle but effective. And of course, remember, I'm chasing it around now, look. Remember you can color these with your blends. You can see here I've I've colored those with a Sharpie. So Oops, one just rolled across the table. That was a gold one. I'll put that one back on for now. And then the final thing to go inside this box, I've cut a strip of basic white cardstock and it measures two and one eighth by eight and a quarter, which is the width of our cardstock. Uh, Carolina, you off? Retired from the housework today. You're off to bed. Bless you. Yes, I'm nearly done. Just catch up. Um, you can catch up with the end and see what we're doing. But thank you so much for stopping by. It was lovely to have you. Hope to see you back here again soon. So eight and a quarter by two and an eighth. And I'm literally just going to fold it in half. And pull out my very best trio punch. Now, depending on what cardstock you're using, I don't mind cutting two layers of basic white in here. I would not recommend you cut more than one layer of our standard cardstock, because I'm sure it's just gonna blunt it very fast. Um, but the way this works, you can do it individually anyway. So I'm gonna do it individually. So I'm going to be using this lovely pattern here. So we're going to pop it in, butt it into the edge. So you can hear it going in and press down. And when you use this punch, don't press on the corner, push in the middle. Then we're going to flip it and do the same. So we've got that. And then we're going to do exactly the same on the opposite edge. So I see a lot of people using this and trying to push like this on this side. You won't get a great cut. So we should have edges that match. Okay. We could have done it together, but I just think you're going to blunt your punch. And then we need to make a little slot in the top with this one. Now... You have got a little guide on here which shows you where the centre point of this is. So we could guesstimate, and I will guesstimate for today. I need to be right over it to do it though. And I am punching two in one go with that one but just because it makes it easier. But what you could do is punch one, fold it back through, draw through it, and then turn your punch over and punch the other one from the other side if you don't want to do two together. I do sometimes find it's difficult to get it right in the middle, so sometimes I will stamp on there with um, 
mark on there with a pencil and and do it by eye from the back of the punch so literally all i'm going to do on here pulled in a scrap i'm going to pull back in my splat and oh <laughs> i don't know where that came that was off my finger i must have touched the gray granite let's just imagine this is the front <laughs> See, it happens to the best of us. It's a good job it's not an important piece of cardstock. It's just a strip that we can redo really quickly. So I'm just sort of filling in. Move you out of the way. Filling in that. I'm going to grab some linen thread. and tie myself a little bow. Oops. Make sure it all goes through at once. Also, another little tip, I never cut ribbon or thread. I tie it from the roll, okay? Because if I tie it and I find it's not long enough, I can then make my piece longer so bell this is where i was going with you last week at this point you could tie a knot on here but i seem to be able to get my little i'm not sure if that's going to be long enough let's just make it a bit longer i don't want to make it hard work so i'm going to tie just one knot there we could tie another knot there or I just use my little finger to hold it down whilst I pull it through. I know some people find that hard to use their little finger. It's not the neatest of bows. Let's go underneath with that. Snip off the tail. Make it a little bit smaller. And then, a little gift card will fit just inside there. Let's make you a little bit shorter. And then all, all both projects, you could put a little glue dot in the back there to hold that in. But both projects, and you've got a little card that you can write in that nearly landed in the ink. You've got a little gift card in there that both sit inside there. You've even got room for a chocolate bar wrapped up or something. And then you've got a ready-made gift in one. Of course, it coordinates with my card that we made earlier. So um, you could just give something else inside the box but I just wanted to show you another way of kind of making that as a gift from what I'd shown you already so it's really sweet I love combining these two stamp sets as well um the words on the irresistible blooms is they are good I love the thank you I love we have a, a hello hooray it's your day that can cover anything um but I for my projects, I could have used like a die to cut to cut that one out or even fussy cut that one out. Um, but I just like the look, the simplicity of the inspired thoughts. So I was going to show you the cards. These are some thank you cards that are going out. But again, using this set and stamping with tone on tone onto the cardstock but showing you that lovely wreath behind and the lovely embossing folder and also the Irresistible Blooms papers as well. Is that what they're actually called? Are they called the same? Put them away now. Um, but yes, yeah, such a lovely, lovely set. Show the box we did at training. Very similar just using different colours, added a bit of DSP around. So that might look nice if I find some to go around there. But the same but different, as I would say. So 
there we go. Well, thank you so much for joining me. Maybe it's your arthritic hands when you struggle with the twine tightness. Yes, when I'm, when I'm definitely tying around a box or doing something, I always have my little finger there holding it and I can seem to manage to keep that little finger down while I'm kind of tying the bow bit. So I guess, yeah. All these things that come with age, hey? Bless you. Thank you, guys. Right, I am due my coffee. 10 to 11, 5 to 11. Ready for a coffee. I feel I feel the need for a coffee. Lots of chat. Thank you all for stopping by. I've got lots coming up. Maybe I'll give you a little sneak peek of one of my fun folds. Ooh, which one do I show you, though? So this is my... Give you a sneak peek of all three. Fun folds class that is coming. Um this month so we've got a real fun one a shuffle card so yeah using the petal park which i absolutely adore so lots of fun things coming this month and what i'm tending to do is on the days that i've got a class here i'm going to leave it open that you can choose from like three classes if you want to come on a different day so i'm not having a specific day for just one class um you can choose from three classes when you come. So that's the way that I'm kind of moving forward with things at present. Right, I need to get on. It's I'm in for the whole day today and I need to get stuck in. Um, <clears throat> back to Nana Day tomorrow. So And classes all day on Thursday. So I have to get stuck in. I will love you, leave you. Please take care out and about on your travels. Um, stay safe and I'll be back with you all very soon. So bye for now.